Recently, I've had a few requests for a necklace that I wore in some of my tutorials. So today I'm going to do a tutorial for something like it. Welcome back my jewelry making friends. If you're new here, my name is Carol and on this channel we talk about how easy it is to make your own jewelry. Now if making easy jewelry projects is something that you are interested in, remember to hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell so that you will never miss a thing. Also give me a thumbs up on the video if you like this one. So recently I wore this necklace in a tutorial. Now I made this necklace a long time ago and I don't still have some of the supplies so today I'm going to be making something similar and hopefully you will like it. Let's take a look at what you need to make this necklace. The original necklace used these teardrops and these bicones and fire polished beads. Now I don't have any of those now so what I've done is I've replaced them with some different beads. Now I will leave links in the description box below for everything that you need to make this. I'm going to start off with this oval shaped connector and I've also got a v-shaped connector. As well I've got some jump rings, I have some chain and this is a black chain. Now I've got two toggle clasps here. Now you might wonder why I've got two, it's because this necklace can be worn in two lengths. So I've added an extender here with a toggle clasp. As well as that you're going to need some wire. Now the beads are some 8mm glass bicones some turbine beads, some little three millimeter glass bicones, some filigree beads, a couple of little faceted rondelles, some glass fire polished faceted beads. Now I will leave a link to a blog post which talks about all of these materials and everything that you need as well as step-by-step -step instructions for this project. All right so we're going to start off by making all of the dangles and there are actually three components here. This one is this component here, this one is this component and it also is all of the ones up the side and then at the end I have this component. So let's go ahead and make some of these components. I'm going to start off by cutting a piece of wire. So just taking my flush cutters and cutting off a piece. Now I've probably got a little bit too much here but I'd like to err on the side of having more rather than less. So I'm just going to make a loop with my one step looper in the end. This is a 2.25 millimeter one step looper and I am using 20 gauge wire. Didn't close quite properly so I'll just close it. Okay so there's my loop. Now what I'm going to do is make this component and I'm going to start with one of my little 3mm bicones, then my 8mm bicone. Now I'm going to put on one of these gorgeous Czech glass turbine beads. Now that is what they look like, aren't they cute? So popping that one on and next one of my fire polished beads. And lastly, one of my rondelles. Now you actually only need two of these components. So that's what I have. And because I'm using glass beads, I'm not going to use my one, stop, one step looper at the top. And the reason for that is sometimes when you use your one step looper at the top, if you get too close, you can actually scrape a little bit of the glass. So I want these to be nice and close, so I'm actually going to use my flush cutters and my round nose pliers. So I'm just cutting that wire, I've bent it to a right angle there, and I'm cutting my wire at about one centimetre, and using my round nose pliers to make a loop. Now if you've never made a loop, I will leave you a link in the description box below for a video and a cut up the top here. Just making my loop there with my round nose pliers. So there we go, now I have two of my components and that's all I need for this necklace. So I'll just pop those out of the way and now I'm going to make work on this one. So I'm starting with the same thing with a piece of wire. Then 
and just putting an end, a loop in the end. If you've never made used a one step looper before, I will leave you a link in the description box for a video on that one as well. All right, now this one starts with these filigree beads. And please excuse me, I always have trouble getting these filigree beads onto the wire because I always seem to get them lopsided. <laughs> They've got holes all around and it's quite hard to see to find the right hole. But once you find it, you're fine. There we go. That one is on in the middle, so it's not lopsided. Excellent. Now I'm going to put on a bicone, an 8mm bicone, my turbine bead, a fire polished bead, and then another one of my little um, filigree beads. So that's what I have. Then I'm going to just, I might use my one step looper this time because I'm not using a glass bead at the top. go. So I actually need eight of these so I'm going to go ahead and make those and I will be back in a moment. All right now I have eight of those components. I am going to make the two end components. Well I'm going to make one because we already made this one. <laughs> All right so just the same process just putting a loop in the end and this time we have one of the little bicones We have your fire polished bead, the large black bicone, another fire polished bead, and another of the little bicones. That's what I have. Now I'm going to bend that wire at the top to a right angle and trim my wire to about a centimetre and make a loop. Right, so here are my three components, all made. Right now I have to join them together. Now if we have a look at the original necklace, I'm going to make this dangle part first. So I'm going to join my two components here onto my oval connector. Now they go with the bicone facing down, the little bicone. So I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and just very carefully I'm going to open that loop, holding it on the side there of the side that opens and I'm just going to twist my hand down and open the loop and I'm going to feed on the first loop of that connector and close that loop just by reversing the process. That's what I have. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So there we are, there's the connector with the two dangles attached. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make this dangle in the center. I'm going to just measure this piece of chain because I don't remember how big I made it. And it is about uh, three and a half centimeters. I've actually attached this one with a little wire wrapped loop with a loop on the other end. Now I'm going to just use, I actually used a 26 six gauge wire for that one, but instead I'm going to just make a tiny wee loop on the end of a piece of wire, as small as I can. And put a right angled bend at the bottom, so it's a nice, nicely centered on the wire like that. And then I'm going to add on one of my little wee bicones here. Like that. And I'm going to make a loop at the top. 
I'm not going to wrap it because I'm using a heavier gauge wire and I don't need to. So just uh, cutting that off at about a centimetre. Actually I might do a little bit less than a centimetre because I'm going to be making a tiny loop and grabbing my pliers, round nose pliers and making the loop. By the way, these pliers are called chroma pliers. I've had lots of questions about them over the years, so or over the time I've had them. So if you were wanting to buy some, I will leave you a link for those as well. Right, so there's my little component. And I'm going to add it to the end of a three and a half centimetre piece of chain. So I'll just pop that out of the way, measure my chain. Now I'm using a black chain here. On the original, I used a mother and son silver chain, but I quite like the black. So I'm just going to cut that at, it'll be, yeah, three and a half. Right, now I'm going to open the loop on the top of my component here, my little bicone component, and pop on the chain and close the loop. So that's what I have now. And now I'm going to add it to the bottom loop of this one. And if we have a look at the original, you can see where I'm going here. I've also got, attaching that on either side, I've attached those dangles with a jump ring. So let's go ahead and do that. Now on the original, I actually attached this straight to there without, I actually opened the chain. And I might attach these ones first and see how that hangs because it's a little bit different in size. So just taking two pairs of chain nose pliers. If you haven't opened jump rings before, I will leave you a link in the description box below to a video on how to do that. All right, so feeding on my component and the that's going into the second loop there. It is a bit tricky to get it in there. It's uh, just too, it's a small hole. Once it's in, it should be fine. Okay, it's not hard, just it was a little bit more challenging. Right now I'm going to do the same on the other side with another jump ring. That's what I have now. Now I'm going to attach this, but first I want to see how far down it's going to hang. So I'm just going to hold it there. And it should be fine if I attach it with a jump ring. So just popping another jump, grabbing another jump ring. You could always, always use a four millimetre jump ring as well, if you wanted to. My aim was for this little piece to hang inside there. And I think it's okay. It could potentially be one link shorter. And I think I might take, yeah, I think I might take a link off. So I'm going to just un undo that jump ring. I'm just going to hook it onto the second uh, chain, link of the chain and see how that looks. Yes, definitely better. Now I'll just chop off that extra link. That's what I have. And potentially you could, if you wanted it to hang shorter, you could even chop another one off. 
but I quite like that. I didn't tell you this, but you actually need a head pin as well. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to put one of my little turbine beads onto my head pin, and I'm just gonna make a loop at the top using my one step looper. quite close to loop so that's okay so that piece is going to sit in the middle there we're going to start by attaching the dangle so we take a hump ring and just open it okay so just popping that one on and closing it up Same on the other side. And closing it up. Alright, now we're going to add a jump ring between those two. Just grabbing another jump ring and opening it. And before we do that, we're going to put the little dangle on. Popping the dangle on and through one jump ring on one side and through the other jump ring on the other side. Closing it up. Just double check that your jump rings are nicely closed when you do this. So that's what I have now. And I know that it's sitting down, but it won't once it's all connected. Alright, I'm just going back to the original. So you can see there that's what I've done here and next I'm going to attach another two jump rings one on either side to that same uh, jump ring and I probably could have done that when it was open but it was quite tricky to it was quite full so I thought I'd just do it individually instead now while you've got this jump ring open Actually, before we do that, we're going to cut our, uh, cut our chain. So just popping that down. All right, so the chain is, uh, the lengths are five and a half centimeters that go along the side of the beads here. So I want to cut uh, six pieces. All right, so grabbing my cutters. I need six pieces at that length. All right, now I have my six cut and I can start attaching them. So I will take my jump ring with my pliers and I'm going to attach one of my connectors, my middle connectors, one piece of chain. And then on the other side, I'm going to connect that middle jump ring there. This is what I have, and I'm going to, that one will be the 
that side because the chain is coming off that side of the jump ring. So it's important to make sure that you don't twist the chain around the component. All right, now I have to repeat that for the other side. Grabbing another jump ring. Putting on my chain. And my component will go on the other side. Now make sure you get them the right way up as well. And then just want to make sure I get it the right way. Popping it on to that jump ring. Now I might leave you a layout diagram in the blog post for this one because it is uh, it's hard to see on camera exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so now what I have is that. So I've got here, I've got one jump ring attaching the connector on either side. I've got one jump ring in the centre. And attached to that centre jump ring, I've got two more jump rings which have a dangle and a chain. Now make sure that the chain is on the outside of the dangle, so uh, of the component. So you want it to loop up like this, so that means that so that it's not twisted, it needs to be on the outside of the jump ring. Hope that makes sense. All right, now we're going to use another jump ring to connect the next component. This may seem a little, uh, a, a bit more challenging than some of the other projects that I do, but honestly, if you take your time and work through it step by step, you will be fine. Okay, so I'm going to put on my chain first. And then I'm going to put on my connect, uh, my little component here. So that's one piece. And then I want to put on another piece on the other side. So basically you're wanting to put the two pieces of chain on the same side. I'll just twist it around so you can see. All right, so the chain and the component. So now what we have is the chain looping up. Going into the jump ring, we have this connector here, we have the jump ring, we have two pieces of chain next to each other, and then we have the other connector. Now we're going to repeat that again. So popping on the chain and that connector, and then now I'm just gonna put on one of my end connectors and close up that jump ring. So that's what I have now. Now I'm going to repeat that for the other side. Okay, so all I have to do now is pop on the ends and the clasp and then I'm going to show you how I extend it to make it a multi-purpose necklace as well. So I'm going to take a jump ring and I'm going to take a piece of chain. Now I've already cut my chain at two and a half centimetres, which is an inch, and I'm going to feed the chain onto the jump ring and then I'm going to feed on this end component here. And I'm going to close up the jump ring. And I'm going to repeat that on the other side. So just taking my jump ring, adding on the component and the little piece of chain, the one inch or 2.5 centimetre piece of chain, and closing up my jump ring. Okay. And now I'm going to pop on my clasp. So putting on the piece of chain and the end of my clasp. This time I'm using the loop end. I'm closing up my jump ring. Just making sure everything's really well closed. 
sitting nicely and neatly. And then I'm going to repeat that on the other side with the bar of the clasp. Now I'm going to show you how I make it work double duty for me by making it have an extender so that I can wear it long or short. So what I have here is I've cut a piece of chain and it's uh, 21 centimetres long. And as I said, I'll write in the uh, blog post what that is in inches because I don't know off the top of my head. And I'm going to pop on the end of the chain onto a jump ring. And I'm going to pop on a piece of the loop of the clasp. So essentially what I'm doing here is making a short chain with a clasp on either, you know, the, the uh, two, clasp, two parts of the clasp on either end. And on the other end I'm going to repeat with the jump ring and the bar part of the clasp. Just move that out of the way for a minute. Now I should tell you, I've actually used this technique to extend other necklaces as well. As long as they've got a toggle clasp, you can use this on any necklace. So there's my extender. And to wear it, what I do, I take my necklace and I feed the loop part onto the bar. And I do the same thing on the other end. So now it can be long with the extender, or if I take the extender off, it can be short. And I really like to be able to do this. It just uh, works really well for me because sometimes I like to wear a, short ne a necklace shorter than other times. So there it is with its short, uh, short chain. So there's my necklace. Now there's just one thing left to do. These extra dangles that I have here, they need to go on the sides here. So just taking my chain nose pliers and it goes on loop number four. So one, two, three, four. Just going to pop that on with that jump ring on there and add my dangle, making sure I get it up the right way. So I want the uh, top is the part with the silver bead. So popping that on there. and closing up the jump ring. So there's my necklace, what do you think? <laughs> now if you enjoyed this video, it would be really great if you would subscribe. Also check us out on Facebook and Instagram. If you're interested in the necklace that I was wearing before, the uh, red one, I can leave a link in the description box below to a video that I did about how to recreate that because it's a vintage piece. The earrings, I'll leave a link for those as well. Thank you so much for watching today. Have a wonderful day and I will see you again soon.